All right, then let's get started. I'm Chris. Woo! All right, so we're going to talk about uh, an image column type today. So uh, traditionally, we've had, you know, if you want to do an image as a column in your SharePoint list, right, you're going to do, it's basically just a hyperlink column, right? You'll choose hyperlink or picture, but really all you're doing is linking an image from somewhere else, whether it's in your SharePoint site or somewhere else. Right, and when you do this, you can set a description, right? And formatted, you can access that through the DESC sub property. Um, and nice thing is you can edit it in a grid view. Very exciting. Uh, about June of last year, it's 2020, and I think it rolled out by October, so everybody should have it by now. Across Office 365 is the new image column type. This is we're going to upload those images directly, and they're going to be stored in your site assets library. Now, there's a ton of sub properties we can get to in list formatting, which we're going to take a look at here. And just one thing, it cannot be edited in grid view. You're going to have to edit it in that form. All right, so all that being said, let's take a look at how we can take advantage of the image column and how we might format that. So we head over to our traditional uh, Warrior Horses site. We're just going to pick on a list. Uh, we'll pick agents here. You know, so we've got a nice normal list here, lots of different formatting. Let's scale that up just slightly. All right, and let's say we want to add a new column. And this time we're going to choose image. So traditionally, again, you would choose something like hyperlink, right? And then you would choose the type or whatever picture. I don't remember where the option is anymore. Does not matter because we're looking at the image, right? And so we choose image here. So the image is type. We're just going to call this uh, pretty. That sounds exciting. I right, call it whatever you want. But the idea is here we add pretty image. And then we edit these items. So again, if I just kind of open this up here, I go to pretty. And add an image directly. It's going to open up. I can upload an image right here. So in this case, I'm going to say traditional horse hug. Right, I'm going to upload that. It's going to show up right there. I close this. Let's add just a couple more. So we've got a couple extras here so we can see what's going on. Let's add another image. Let's pick another beautiful image here of a horse. Uh, let's just say where's the evil eye horses. Perfect. OK. All right, so now we've got a couple of them here. And that's cool. And so traditionally, you know, the out of the box formatting on these is going to show just a tiny little icon. And when you click that, it's going to open that image uh, almost full screen. It actually has a maximum size of 3000 by 2000 in a new window. And that's cool, right? I mean, that's a huge uh, benefit. And if we actually look where these are stored, right, we'll actually see that they're in the site assets library with a in a folder called lists with a folder with the GUID of the list ID here. Uh, one thing to notice is that if you swap that column out or use the picture again, you use the picture again, it's going to upload it again. If you delete the image off of the, the list item, it's not going to delete it out of the side assets library. So that's just some fun facts for you. OK, but what if we want to format this? All right, so I've got my column settings. I'm going to format this column. And I've got this beautiful box here. Let's make this slightly bigger. All right, what can I do with this? All right, so if I say Elm type, all right, we'll just make it a div for now, which doesn't make a ton of sense. We'll say text content, right? We're going to say at current field, right? Take a look at that. Object, so we know it's got sub properties. So there's a number of sub properties, and we'll take a look at them in a minute, but like you could say like file name, for instance. There we go. Now we have that file name there, so we can get that out of the image. We can also do things like, you know, server rel relative URL, all right, which there you go, and you can actually see, just like we talked about, it's in that site assets folder inside the list with your GUID and all that. And in order, if you wanted to change that around, you wanted to say this was a, you know, now it's an image, and instead of a text content, we're going to say attributes. And I want to say, ooh, I want to say source. Let's just copy this thing out. Out there, I need text content for an image. Right, this might be the traditional way you would do this. Uh, you do something like that. Maybe you want to be a little fancy. You want to make sure it works inside Teams. So you say equals to say at current web plus, right? Uh, you can preview that. And oh, we got to add the uh, slash. Because you know, that makes sense. Okay, so we add a plus here. But the idea here is we can do kind of a traditional. Well, we'll ignore what I'm doing here. There's also a uh, server URL we can use. Okay. Point though is we've got several sub properties, but there's also this whole other area of sub properties called the thumbnail renderer, which we're going to take a look at. And thumbnail renderer's got things like the SB item URL, it's got a sponsor token, it's got a file version, got a bunch of extra stuff that we can use. So what if we wanted to do kind of a traditional, uh, we wanted to at least map what they were doing, right? So if you recall, what they were doing is just a box here. All right, so if we wanted to map that or kind of imitate that, we've got a format here. 
And everything I'm pulling out here, by the way, is part of a light box sample uh, originally put together by, uh, I'm going to say it wrong, Jao Fiario. I'll just mumble it enough and you'll get it right. We'll take a look at that sample in a minute. But the idea here is if I do that, right, it doesn't look a lot different. All I've really done is I've got that same image, I put a cursor, but instead I'm doing this fancy thing here where I'm accessing the thumbnail render as an SP item URL. Right, I'm going to the thumbnail. I'm saying the first thumbnail index zero. I've got a custom size of 48 by 48. I'm going very fast on all of this kind of craziness here that's happening. All of this is using uh, the underlying uh, SharePoint version two REST API, which is really just using graph. So you can actually check out uh, what's happening here when it's getting that kind of drive option. So if we take a look at what that looks like here, uh, we just uh, well, did F12 to inspect that. We had F12, right? And we go to inspect that guy, which is now very tiny. You can just see this sucker. All right, but the idea here is you can actually see what it generated. All right, so it's it's going in, it's got that drives link, and it's got a bunch of ugly GUID type stuff. But the whole idea is it's taking care of all that for you. And again, all I did, or all we're doing, is grabbing the Thunder Renderer sub property and getting its sub objects there. Mostly just cut and paste this, right? But the idea here is if we look at this API, we see we've got some different options, mostly around sizing. All right, so you see we've got, uh, not that guy, there we go. So we've got this custom 48 by 48 here, All right? We could change that instead of custom. We could say, you know, we just have one of their default sizes like small, we preview that. We're gonna see that it's gonna come in at 96 by 96, but we've got it cut off in this uh, box here, just cause we've got the overflow hidden. Uh, but we can do small, we can do small square, you know, you can jump up to large. There's a lot there. Let's take a look at the sizes a little more here in a second, because that's okay. What if we want to go a little further, right? So let's get rid of that. Well, let's go back to that custom 48 by 48, just so we've got that sucker. There we go, beautiful. Now, if we want to kind of add a little bit to that, so this is where that light box sample comes in. Instead of the traditional, we want to open in a new window, we want to keep everything right here. So I'm going to copy and paste another part of this format. And the only real difference here is we've got our image, the same kind of thing here, but we have a custom card. So we've got a hover card here. And all we're doing with the hover card is we've got an image inside that hover card. And here we're gonna take that and we're gonna go a little more elaborate. So we've got the exact same image, but now we're gonna go with the medium. So if we preview that, we can see we get this interesting, uh, ignore the, uh, it had a little trouble with the first render, there it is. Um, that's just because we're in the formatting window with that beak. But you can see now we've got a nice little thumbnail, right? So traditionally, you might want to make that a lot bigger, right? So instead of medium, again, you know, this is where we're going to mess with those. All right, so small is 96 by 96. Medium is 176 by 176. And large jumps up to 800 by 800. So not a lot in between. All right, so there we go. Now we've got a really big one. All right, and if we wanted to do custom, right? We kind of saw that before we type a C and then we type in our width. So in this case, we're going to say, I don't know, 300. And we're going to say our height. So put a little X there. And our height is also, we're going to say 300. Now it's going to keep our aspect ratio. So when we preview that, all right, we're going to see that it's just going to take the longest side and it's going to make that 300 pixels and then the height's going to be whatever. Now, if we wanted it exactly 300 by 300, right? In other words, we don't want to care about this aspect ratio. We can actually add an underscore crop on the end. Now, when we preview that, Take a look at that. It's actually going to crop it so we have an exact square. So you can get the exact same, you know, exact size you want there. So there's a lot of flexibility in this kind of image sizing and how it comes about. So that's cool, right? So what if we want to go, you know, slightly further than that, right? What if we wanted this to be a little more dynamic, our size, right? We're not quite sure, you know, what, what people are dealing with, right? If they've got an old 15-inch monitor that's set to, you know, like 800 pixels, is this max or whatever, right? What if we wanted to take advantage of that? So we wanted to then set this size kind of dynamically. We can do that. So all we're really doing is building the string. You see these little pluses with the single quotes. So we can actually break that up. So instead of custom here, we can delete those guys, the key pieces. Let's just add the pluses, right? Just so we don't lose any of that. I'm gonna get rid of this crop. There we go. Now, if we want to insert our own values in here, we can. So we could say things like, ceiling because we don't want I will say this one thing this doesn't do is does not accept decimals so you can't uh, you know have any kind of piece there so when you seal and make sure we have an integer we say at window dot inner width right so this is going to give us at the time of drawing the inner width of the actual window and we're going to say no bigger than half that size 
right? And we're going to do the same thing for the height. We're going to say plus, and we're going to say uh, ceiling, and we're going to say at window dot inner height. Right. Oh, and I think it looks like we forgot a plus up here. Give that a try. We'll see if we got that right. There we go. So the idea here is it is constraining it. Now it's hard to see a little bit. So let's save this and let's uh, refresh everything so we get that new window height drawn into the way we expected. All right, so now we've got this. It's kind of limiting the size exactly. You can do a little more with that. But if we were to say like F12, this guy, just so we can get a, a smaller window. All right, I'm going to refresh that. So it re-renders and has the new window height. When we click that, you'll see it is responding and it's automatically given it smaller. All right, so by taking advantage of those inner width and inner height in our custom sizing, we can make sure that things you know fit pretty well here. Now, normally though, a light box is used to show you know the full size image, right? But now we're trying to constrain that because we don't want to overwhelm if you have a gigantic uh, image, right? So one of the things we might want to do is provide a link. So we could do that as two, as two, as well, All right? So we're going to go grab this guy. We don't need this part anymore. And we're going to just go here. We're going to go column settings. We're going to format this column. I'm going to paste the next version of this, which again, if we kind of expand that out so we can see the only real difference here now. So we have that same image, or we've got that ceiling. We've got all that kind of coming out. But now we have this link. We're going to kind of absolutely position on the bottom right. That's going to open it up in a new window, just like the other one did. So if we preview that, we can see. Now we've got this nice little button, and when we click that, it's going to open that same image in a whole new window. And the idea here is now you can do a lot with these image columns, right? So the image columns are are really powerful because it's it's very hard to get even strong power users to understand. Go to a document library, upload images, copy that link, go to your list, paste that link, right? There's a lot of steps there that are very easy to mess up, and especially if they copy the wrong image, right? They might have copied an asset link that works for a day, but then that token will expire, and now their thumbnail no longer works. So an image column is a is a huge step up in terms of usability. So we want to also take advantage of that in terms of our formatting. So by using all these kind of sub properties, we can have a lot of power and a lot of control over all this. So all of those samples are available. And let's take a look, kind of wrap up here. All right, so here's all of those image sub properties, right? So we mentioned this idea of file name, uh, which one is the one you probably use a lot. And then if you're trying to do any kind of custom sizes, you'll skip all of the rest of these and jump into the thumbnail renderer. For examples of how those links are put together, please take a look at the sample. That's a lot easier to take a look at. Uh, but again, you can also consult the graph API uh, for how to get to the content of a drive item. Great. Okay. So drive thumbnail sizes, we kind of mentioned those here. Again, those are listed in kind of the graph API documentation. Uh, and these are these are helpful, but the primary helpful ones here are these width and height. Although keep in mind, if you wanted to just do uh, a cropped version yourself of the small, medium, or large, you can add square with a capital S on the end and it will pump it automatically. Otherwise, it's going to keep that original ratio just like you expected before. OK, so check out the full documentation here. Uh, check out this awesome sample, the image light box that's going to have the uh, the advanced version as well with kind of that link out and the custom sizing. Um, but that's about it for me. Thanks. Thank you, Chris. Thank you so much. Thank you.